So again, on 39 through 42, the first thing they're asking you guys to do, the first thing they say is state the degree and list the zeros. All right. So to state the degree, what we have to do is we'd have to say this needs to be multiplied out. Right? This would actually have to be multiplied out. So we say, all right, well, this is negative x. If I was, bless you, if I was going to expand x plus 2 squared, that would be x plus 2 times x plus 2. So the expanded form of that would give me a degree of x squared. And the expanded form of x minus 3 would give me a degree of x cubed. So then, if I was to multiply all these out, and again, we don't really need to do that. You could. You could obviously multiply all these out if you wanted to. But anyways, if you were to multiply these out, you'd have an x cubed times x squared times negative x, which would give you a degree of x to the sixth power. And it'd be a negative x to the sixth power. Right? And I'm ruining that dot, 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 because again, the leading coefficient test, it doesn't matter what um, the leading coefficient doesn't matter what all the values are. It just matters on what's the highest power, which we call the degree, and what is the value of the leading coefficient, which in this case is negative. Now, this is an even, so therefore it's like the quadratic. If it's even and positive, we know the graph opens up and up. If it's even and negative, we know it goes down and down. You do need to know how to write limit notation, so make sure you go back and study that. But in this case, we're just going to use falls left and falls right. OK, and I'll come back to that in a second. The next thing it says is find the zeros. So here's our function. To find the zeros, um, basically what that means, if you remember in our notes, that means we need to replace f of x with f of x with zero. So we set that equal to 0. And we have negative x times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 cubed. Now that we have a product of factors set equal to 0, we did this in your first set of focus lessons. We did problems like this. All you do is when you have things separated by multiplication equal to 0 to solve, we need to now set them equal, all equal to 0 using the zero product property. So we'd say negative x equals 0, x plus 2 squared equals 0, and x minus 1 cubed equals 0. Now we just solve each one individually. So I divide by negative 1, x equals 0. Take the square root of both sides, x plus 2 equals 0. So therefore, subtract the 2, subtract the 2, x equals negative 2. Take the cube root of both sides. Remember, you have to take the cube and the square root first before you can do anything inside the parentheses. So therefore, I get x minus 1 equals 0, plus 1, plus 1, x equals 1. So therefore, I have three zeros. My three zeros are 0, negative 2, and 1. I want you guys also to notice something. Do you guys notice when I took the square root and took the cube root, it didn't really affect the 0, right? It didn't really affect the 0. However, these numbers are very important because these are what tell us the degree of the factor, um, which tells us our starts with a m, which was the next question, the multiplicity. So in this case, this really has a multiplicity of 1. This has a multiplicity of 2. This has a multiplicity of 3. So we'd say multiplicity equals 1, multiplicity equals 2, multiplicity equals 3. That's really important because in your notes last class period, when the multiplicity was odd, that told us that the graph crossed at that 0. And if the multiplicity was even, that said the graph bounced. So I'm going to write that in there. Crossed, bounces, crosses. Now watch. The last thing it asks you to do is um, x out of the course minus x intercept. Then sketch the graph of the polynomial by hand. So you could use technology, and I will use technology to verify my answer. Oh, thank you. So here's an x and y axis. 
Here's my 0. I have a 0 at x equals 0. I have a 0 at negative 2. And I have a 0 at 1. Does everybody agree with me that zeros are the same thing as x-intercepts? Remember, we talked about that. Zeros are the same as your x-intercepts. Yeah. OK. Now, let's go back to our end behavior. The end behavior falls left, falls right. So that means the graph falls left and falls right. That's the end behavior of the polynomial. We know it crosses here, and we know the end behavior. Because of the multiplicity, we know if it crosses or if it bounces. So at 1, we know that the graph crosses. At negative 2, it bounces. So it either bounces like this or bounces like that. And then at three or at uh, 0, it also crosses. So now, to draw the graph by hand, I'm just sketching the graph. I'm just going to connect both end behaviors and then follow the kind of pattern. So watch. Boom, 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 boom. And there you go. Done. So that's how you do 39 through 34. You identify the end behavior first. You find the zeros. 